Ladies and gentlemen, we are live right now. Quick announcement before we hop into the video. We just dropped a brand new beginner's program by kaizentraining.com and right now it is 40% off pre-sale. So you can get it discounted for a very limited time. Basically what we did is built two different eight week programs that you can layer on top of each other or do them in succession. One of them is non-barbell related. It is more of a general fitness program. The other one is barbell related. You can either do them together simultaneous if you wanna get bigger, stronger, start to feel better, really build yourself up in the gym. Another great application is if you took a nice long break from the gym, maybe even a month or two, and you wanna get back in or you got sick, life came up and you're trying to build back up to where your numbers were, where your physique was, this is another great option. Dive into this, comes with a full PDF book, tons of instructional videos. Check it out right now, kaizentraining.com, K-I-Z-E-N training.com. Enjoy the video. Speaking of lifting, here's a question f that was in from uh, from the show's Instagram. Uh, I f Fiddlination is the person who asked, asked this question. What current and or possible future technologies can powerlifting competitions use to, to remove subjectivity in judging squat depth? And I frankly do not have an answer to that question. There, uh, uh, sadly, I, I, well... One, do we want to? Yeah. Um, two, you can make that argument for any sport. Yeah. Uh, basketball, football, replays. People are trying yeah. to do different things. Um, I think the number one would probably be video replay. And the issue would only be time um, mm -hmm. because you'd maybe need a separate set of judges to go over it. And maybe you do it with a two to one call or something of that nature. I'm just freeballing this off. I've never really even thought about this. The other one people have thrown around is some kind of laser setup, um, which kind of makes sense um, with depth uh, or something of that nature. And so say you, or even, uh, yeah, with depth, we'll start with depth. So when you get your ha uh, rack height mm -hmm. at check-in, you also get a depth height by this laser. And I'm no freaking engineer, <laughs> but I'm sure there's some laser that could do this pretty simply. And so they check where your hip crease is on that depth mm. and you have to hit that or below and the laser basically tells you from the side whether you're good. And then maybe you have a judge uh, one or two to see kind of an up-down motion or something. Um, and then the other one I thought about with bench, with the pause, is uh, fencing. Fencing, they have uh, tipped uh, suits and swords. So oh. when you hit it, it, it like hits a buzzer. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so you do something like that with a pause and maybe you set a timer. So maybe there's, you know, everyone has the exact whatever 0.6 mm -hmm. second pause. And so when you hit your chest, the bar touches that thing. A buzzer goes off, and now you can press. Um, but again, I think that depending on the federation, depending on the individual, uh, I don't necessarily think machines are the way to go. It's a training issue. I think at the end of the day, it's training people to be able to look at different body types and 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 look at that point, that you know, hip crease relative to the knee, and develop consistency around judging it. And it probably means like watching a lot of side view video yeah. to get a sense of, of, you know, what passes and what doesn't pass and being able to shoot those things from, um, um, from that same angle. I know that there are federations that do, uh, like preceptorship for judging. Uh, you can't become a, an international ref until yeah, you've, yeah. you know, passed a test and, and all that stuff. I the thing is that all of those people have individual biases too. We're not at a point, I don't think, somebody can enlighten me on this, where we really have what they call inter-rater reliability, where everybody is seeing the same thing roughly the same way. Yeah. And the baseball of the professional sports is probably the one that's the worst for this relative to to pitch location, struck balls and strikes. They have machinery that can call balls and strikes much more accurate than humans. Uh, but there's there's been a question about that because baseball is an old game. Yeah. And everybody is very bound in the tradition of that. And I think that powerlifting may be the same way. And then the only way to overcome that is with training, except when you look at baseball, there are wide variations of strike zones from from uh, home plate umpire to home plate umpire. Yeah. Yeah, I think, so. I think there's two things. I think one... Um, training standards and stuff but i think also like kind of anyone can become a judge in powerlifting where yeah. like at a professional level or even a high school level a competitive high school level for most sports um pay is a little bit better yep uh and so then the qualifications to get there might be a little bit more difficult so then maybe the, the you know the 
expertise is a little bit better. Obviously, at the professional level, NBA, NFL, et cetera, is probably pretty good. I've heard a lot of those guys are like lawyers, judges, et cetera. Mm-hmm. Um, and so then, and they're getting paid well. So to get there, it's a little bit more of a task. So maybe we raise that. Uh, you raise the pay a little bit, and then you might raise the the how optimal these guys are. But then we have to get into um, federation consolidation so For that sure. there's actually you know uh, enough people involved to make it worthwhile. Um, there's going to have to be more money in the sport. Yeah, I think it depends on the federation because I think there's some money rolling around places that we don't know where it's going. Well, that's that's possible too. And and this is not a comment that's connected to that. But I don't know if you saw that the new raw bench, bench? Yeah, yeah, re- yeah. record from from yeah yeah um, boss bosses. Where and this, it passed? Is that the yeah, big issue? Yeah, it passed. It, and he didn't no, like rack the, it, or the, the judges didn't rack it. Right? The big issue was that the side spotter celebrated at the end of the press yeah, yeah. when the, you can't hear the rack command in any video that yeah. I've and he's like kind of holding it and then he kind of drops it yeah yeah he's the other side tends yeah. uh, the other side came down started to yeah. you know his yeah. elbow or wrist or whatever started to buckle um and the you know I number one I hate all-time world records that are not clean yeah it is I would hate it as a lifter to be honest but most of the time they're not clean yeah it is hard it is and hard. if they're especially if they're not in a um, USAPL yeah IPF yeah those world. those tend to look a little prettier yeah uh, the standards tend to be really tight um, I, this is I'm like several people said well they don't pay spotters. Well, they fuck sometimes they, they do. Yeah. Well, why sometimes. the fuck don't they pay spotters? Yeah. Sometimes they if do. If anybody's making money on it, yeah. then yeah, uh, somebody needs to be paying spotters. And that, that's been a topic for a long time. Uh, yeah. There was an IPF worlds where spotters were highly ridiculed, and uh, other meets were highly ridiculed, and people got hurt. Um, and it's a dangerous sport. Going yeah. back, to my last thing on the judges is that powerlifting rule book um, is and the sport uh, and what you're judging is so freaking simple compared to football oh, yeah. baseball yeah uh, i'd probably say football and basketball are probably the hardest just because there's so much going on right um football there's a lot of guys going on basketball there's a lot going on doesn't stop like that's really hard refereeing um, mm-hmm. and so if we are complaining about powerlifting like I mean, how many how many bad calls are made in a basketball game? Uh, thousands, and so uh, yeah, quite you just a get few. Over it, yeah, so yeah. if there's a couple, and you have three judges at a powerlifting meet, um, chances are that all three f up is a little bit lower. Uh, mm-hmm. So I, I I think it's probably the least, not the least. It's not a priority in how we raise the sport of powerlifting right now, in my eyes. Uh, Olympic weightlifting. They only got, you know, they got the same kind of judges and that's in the Olympics doing just fine. And I'm sure people kind of complain about it, but it's kind of simple, you know, whether you press out or you don't, whether yep. equipment breaks or doesn't, it's, it's fairly simple. I, I think that, yeah, I think that Olympic lifting, um, judging is a lot simpler. Yeah. I mean, it happens fast. Yeah. I mean, it's fast, but yeah. it, it ha- I think it's simpler. I, I, I think it's all damn simple. Like I think we have bigger issues to fry. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like our media, the money consolidation of, of feds mm-hmm. i think those are bigger issues if we want this sport to grow or make the olympics or who knows what then just from behind the scenes i can tell you that the the multiply feds are experiencing some consolidation around the whole wpo effort yeah trying to because, make something happen again yeah because um because of where you have to compete in order to qualify yeah, that's yeah. really what it comes down to uh <clears throat> some brilliant work on uh, michael fahey's part there uh okay going to my instagram uh can this is jacob w ross our good friend can you just talk about how we might be related please and thank you um (laughs) jacob and i may be related Uh, but way back 23 and me type stuff yeah potentially potentially i have you guys are both pretty american um yeah well but the deal is that we're very like english scottish uh, i just mean like your folks have been here a while Yes, yeah, a lot of generations, yeah, yeah, and that yeah. gets hard. I think many, well, many generations. Yeah, one of my other friends did it, and he's like, "Yeah, I don't know." It goes like five generations, and we're in Boston. I'm like, "Well, that's pretty tough." <laughs> you know, like it's just tough to track. Like, yeah, you're English, oh, yeah. but like, where, where does it go from there? Because there's such a split and so much movement. Yeah, in the 1500s, 1600s, I have Rosses in my family tree. Oh, so, and very like, I guess his brother did it. So we haven't we haven't really compared yeah, yet, but should. like, it's it's a real possibility. Uh, I don't. I, I, this might be quick nip in the bud. This might not be. Uh, can introverts do good at powerlifting meets oh i think that that's absolutely true they absolutely can yeah you don't i think it depends on your i guess your definition of an introvert but like i'd imagine and i understand like 
performance anxiety and things yeah. of that nature. But I don't know if that's directly related to introvert extrovert. I think there's probably tons of extroverts who get an insane amount of uh, performance anxiety. And I would also imagine that like there's a high level and, and this, these are all kind of stereotypes, but I'd imagine there's like high level of creativity and creative people that are insane introverts, like a comedian, mm-hmm. uh, actor. Some of those people are probably very, very introverted. And you can argue I'd I'd like to argue that like stand up comedy in front of a huge crowd, mm-hmm. even a small crowd, but a huge crowd is probably like the most performers anxiety, at least that I could imagine. Mm-hmm. You know, like lifting, you don't have to say nothing. There's nope. three judges, no one's even watching nope. you. No, nope. but if you go to you know and you you have a sold out stadium, uh, Jerry Seinfeld or something like that, there's twenty thousand people just watching you talk. Yeah, and stand there. Well, you've got. You got f- the room for fifteen seconds. Is all you got yeah. when you're lifting. So it's that's not. You long. don't even have the room. No one's looking. Nobody. No one yeah. Nobody's no really cares. paying attention. If you were lifting on a um, on a stage that has lights, you can't see the the, yeah. the crowd at all. There's no. I mean, it's it, it's very personal. It's very yeah. internal. I think. Um, even people who have big demonstrations in their wind up, wind up for a lift. Yeah, yeah, it could be. That's introverts. still very yeah, introverted, yeah. I think. Yeah, and I think it's impossible to say. Like, there's no like clean cut, and maybe yeah. there is that I don't know. But there's no like psychoanalysis that you're introverted, you're extra. You know, it's not like cut and dry. It's a continuum. Yeah, you people and, who are introver- and even still, like, I don't yeah. think you can just like categorize people. It's just a way you can kind of say like, yeah. I like to be alone. Uh, another huge example I would give us. And again, this is just stereotyping judging from the outside is Kawhi Leonard. Obviously, he became like an internet meme with how kind of like he kind of talks like a robot. He kind of looks like, you know, like he kind of mm-hmm. awkward. And maybe he's just awkward. Maybe he's extroverted. Maybe he loves being around people. But seems like he is kind of quiet and kind of introverted, uh, yet performed his best on the biggest stage in the world. Yeah. Uh, I tend to think that something that requires a physical performance like that uh, really gets around social anxiety. Yeah. Yeah. Which, which, is because you're because social anxiety yeah. is so much about about speaking right, right. It, whereas, and you can have both you yeah. can be introverted and have some social anxiety but i think there's people that are introverted uh that that have no issues uh, no anxiety mm-hmm. uh i'm somewhere in between i'm definitely introverted and sometimes i have social anxiety but a lot of times i'm fine socially mm-hmm. uh, and i'm definitely fine performing wise i mean you get nerves every human gets nerves like but i'm not like crazy and and i think actually lifting the individualness of it, and like you said, like it's so inside the work. Mm-hmm. Like you're, you, you train for potentially five years, and then, and then lift nine lifts to compete. Mm-hmm. Like it's way different than like even basketball, where like basketball you're competing half of the time and you're practicing half of the time, mm-hmm. or football you're competing, you know, one seventh of the time and practicing uh, six sevenths of the time or whatever. But there's more of powerlifting is done alone. Yep. Uh, than it is the actual competing part. And I mean, even back in the day when I was um, with a group because we were lifting in gear and you need a group of people, like even quiet people found yeah. their niche. Even yeah. even quiet people managed to, to get their lifts.